I want you to close your eyes. Now I want you to think of a circle. And then I want you to place a dot in the middle of that circle. The world is the circle, and you are the dot. Now outside of the circle, on one side, I want you to think of an innumerable number of angels, thousands upon thousands of holy angels. As far as your eyes can see, I want you to see angel upon angels, every angel that has ever been created. And now on the other side, I want you to think of every demon and unclean spirit that is on earth, and all of them united in one place. I don't know how many spirit beings will be around the circle, but if all of them joined together and pleaded and begged that God would stop loving you, he would say no. Let's focus on the angels. Think about it. If all of the angels stood before God and said to him, God, please stop loving him. Please stop loving her. God would say no. These are holy angels that have never sinned. They are called holy angels because they have never sinned. They could all point at you and say to God, Please stop loving them. Stop loving these sinful people. You have done so much for them, but yet they don't appreciate you. They forget to give you all the glory, God, when you bless them. But they are the first to blame you when something bad happens. They don't follow your laws. They don't follow your commandments. They make a mockery out of righteousness and holiness. They place things before you, making those things their idols. They don't pray enough. God, please stop loving them. Do you know what God would say? He would say, never. Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This verse answers the question, will God stop loving us? Will the devil convince him to stop loving us? Paul was sure of what would happen, and that is why he wrote that nothing could separate us from the love of God. The devil cannot succeed. Demons cannot succeed. Fallen angels from the pit of hell cannot succeed. They cannot stop God from loving you and me. The love of God is pure. One thing that you should know and hold on to is that the love of God doesn't know the end. God has no end. He is everlasting. He will always remain the same and will never change. In this same manner, the love of God is forever. How do we know this? 1 John 4, 8 King James Version says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God himself is love. Love is the identity of God. It is the nature of God. When you see God, you have seen love. Love is what God is all about. Because God is everlasting, the love in him is everlasting. What did he do with this everlasting love? Jeremiah 31, 4. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I have drawn thee. I want us to understand this very well. That everlasting love that God has in himself. He showed it to us. He loved us with the everlasting love. This is how much God loves you and me. This is how far he is willing to go to prove to you that he loves you. Why should you have it in mind that God doesn't love you? Why should you allow the devil to make you think that God doesn't love you? If God never loved you, you would not have the assurance of heaven. If God doesn't love you, you would have been destroyed by the devil. But God who has loved you with an everlasting love helped you and protected you. Psalm 124, 2-3-3 If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. This is what that love can do to you. Why should you allow the situation you find yourself in today make you think that God has stopped loving you? Many people do ask the question that if God loves us truly, why does he send people to hell? This question breaks my heart because people do not understand anything about the love of God. This is a question that people have been asking over the years. Why does God allow people to go to hell or send people to hell? God doesn't send people to hell. What you need to know is that God never created hell for man. God created mankind and placed him in the Garden of Eden. 
He did not create the man so that he can send him to hell. God loves you and I. God placed us in Eden, in a place that was amazing. Satan rebelled against God in the beginning and he was judged. Hell was created for the devil, Satan and his angels. Hell is not what God wants for you, but it is what you are demanding by your choice to rebel against God. It is what you are demanding by disobeying Him. The lake of fire is the fruit of your own choice if you disobey God. But I am here to ask you, to even plead with you, to even beg you, please don't go to hell. Because hell is a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a place where there is no exit. What goes there stays there. When you are there, you are there forever. Hell is a place where there is no love of God. Hell is a place where there is no mercy of God. Hell is a place where there is no joy or peace or love or smiles. Hell is a place where the devil and the falling angels and the Antichrist will spend eternity. God being completely justified could have destroyed mankind from the face of the earth through being a God of justice and a God of righteousness. There would be no basis for questioning the judgment and the righteousness of God if God had decided at the very fall of Adam, no more mankind. God completely had the option to destroy humanity from the face of the planet Earth. But God is not only a God of justice, but God is not only a God of righteousness. He is also a God of love. And he didn't destroy the world because of his love for it. You see, God will go extraordinary lengths to keep a person out of hell. But it is the person's choice. Hell is not for human beings. It is created for the devil. If anyone goes to hell, God did not send him there. They chose that place. There is something that God gave us, and it is a great gift. That gift is called choice. We can choose anywhere you want to go, anything you want to be, anything you want to do. God has given us the ability to choose. You can choose where you want to go after death. We can see this in the book of Deuteronomy 3019, King James Version. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. You have to decide. You have the power to choose where you want to go. God will never send you to hell. It is you who will choose where you want to go, and you can do this through your actions here on earth. God loves you, and that love can never be stopped by the devil. Not that the devil and his angels are not trying to stop this love, but they have been failing and will always fail. We will look at the different ways the devil has been trying to stop God from loving us. Firstly, by accusing us day and night. As you are listening to me right now, the devil is actively accusing you in the presence of God. The devil is actively showing God your mistakes. He is asking why Jesus died for us. He wants God to stop loving you by showing God your mistakes. Do you know what God is telling him? God is telling him that he has loved us with an everlasting love, love that has no end, the kind of love that no form of accusation can overcome. Revelation 12.10 King James Version And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. If the devil can be cast away because of you, if the devil can be ignored because of you, should you ever doubt the love of God for your life? If God is telling you that he has loved you with an everlasting love, should you be doubting this love? 2. He attacks you directly. After the devil has accused you, he will attack you directly. Not that he will stop accusing you, he will always attack you at the same time. He will make use of every possible means to make you fall and cause God to stop loving you. But the Bible says in 1 John 1.9, King James Version, 
that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is the love of God that will make God forgive our sins in Jesus' name. Some of the attacks that the devil brings are sickness, challenges, demons, death, or temptations. Despite all of these, Paul said that they cannot stop God from loving us. How high is the mountain facing you? How deep is the valley you are going through? How dark is the night? How bright is the light? What is that condition you are facing right now? What is it that is bothering you right now? Do you think these things can stop God from loving you? These things are not enough to take away the everlasting love from you. God has loved you genuinely. Do you love him the same? Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can't just read this and assume Paul was only talking about God loving us alone. He was also talking about us loving God too. If we love God, it means we love our lives because we will follow his commandments and if we follow them, we receive eternal life and we are rescued from death. Proverbs 19.16, King James Version He that keepeth the commandments keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. You are loved. God has promised to bless you and keep you, and it is all because of his love. He says he will be with you everywhere you go. This is also the evidence of his love for you. It doesn't matter what people are saying about the love of God. It doesn't matter what they think about this love. What you should keep in you at all times is the fact that God loves you, and he will never stop showing it to you that he loves you. This is the time to seek for the love of God. It is time to find the love of God. In everything you are going through, find the love of God because it is that love that can keep you and save you from all troubles. The truth is that this love can be found in one way only.